So after the catastrophe that was last week's episode, it seemed like no living person could save this show now. We have had great ideas trapped inside of misguided stories that all deserved better, especially Sad Woman, because that was so close to being a Stone Cold classic. Well, I guess all the odds, it turned out that somehow, during the set of scripts Chipmunk wrote for Torchwood in 2006, he managed to make something genuinely fantastic. Like, this is strange. Imagine Chimmel's thought process while he was making his way through his assigned episodes. He goes from over-the-top melodrama with a sexy cyborg to a terrifying, heart-racing episode filled with horror and atmosphere before going on to tell and not show with the end of days. I'd love to get inside his head and learn how he managed to whiplash so incredibly because this episode is so bloody good that I'm genuinely suffering from whiplash. But none of my whining about his other episodes can detract from this brilliant 45 minutes of television. This is the kind of writer I know Chris Jimmel can be and I hope to see again in his upcoming work. Obviously I don't want cannibals and Doctor Who or anything, and nothing this dark, but this level of quality is astounding and is one of the reasons he's one of the most promising writers working in British television at the moment. I mean, it just in current television, not throughout history, because he has written some major duds as of late. But let's dissect his very first, in my opinion, classic episode in Countryside. Countryside starts fantastically with a dark twist on the cold open format that we have become used to in the first few years of the revival. I've always loved the cold openings and I think it seems to be thanks to the revival that it has become a staple of the show and modern pop culture in general. Although it could very well have been present before the revival, but at the very least it was popular in Doctor Who after the revival started and I'm very glad. But this individual episode has to go down as having one of the best cold openings in the entire franchise. The way it plays on that fear that anyone who's been in the countryside, alone or not, will sure to have had at some point, it elevates point by point, starting with a dead body on the road, the woman having the fear to go out and check, a shadow then moves behind her and she must run back to the car where the key is gone, and second by second, the scraping on the roof gets louder. Another clever piece of writing is the way in which it demonstrates the stakes of the main characters. She cannot get a phone signal which shows us how the characters are going to be isolated when they find out what is really happening but only themselves acting as the way to save the day. Also, unlike the Doctor, they do not have the intelligence or the lifespan of the Time Lord, so when we see the woman dragged away, we could very well be seeing a glimpse of what could be happening to the characters in the coming episode. And just to make the scene even more brutal and impactful, that poor woman's body could very well be one of the bodies sitting in the larder that we see later on. I understand if you may need to process the genuine horror of that for a moment. It's just a few minutes long, but it is honestly perfect, and even though it is very on the nose, I love the way coming over the hill is playing on the car radio. It's very blunt, and I love they did that. If I had to nitpick, though, I would say it was a bit odd she leaves the car door open when she's not taking the body. This would not even have been hard to write around as the thing could have easily opened it as long as you make sure it doesn't lock. But that is an exceedingly small nitpick, and if that's the only problem in an otherwise fantastic theme, then I think we have a good episode on our hands. I love the way the characters start the episode. The script does a good job at showing how isolated they are and far away from help, and it gives us the inciting incident that has drawn the characters here and the incident that we're going to be dealing with over the following episode. Although it is a bit odd how Jack just says what the case is out loud randomly. I mean, I'm sure the characters would have already known what was going on if they came up here. Who's he telling? 17 disappearances within the last five months. Police are clueless. However, that is another nitpick, and it was needed in order to keep the audience in the know as to what is happening without needless setup back in Cardiff. The tension between the characters is incredibly well defined in this opening scene, and the rest of the episode for that matter. The characters are starting to come to their own rather than just being the generic stereotypes they were introduced as in the opening episodes. The game that they all play, where they are trying to remember who the last person they dog was, was a great way to introduce the character conflicts this episode and the rest of the series went on to explore further. This episode acts as a better character introduction than either of the first two episodes. Although, in fairness, this wouldn't have worked as a pilot or a second episode because leaving Cardiff and the base as well as avoiding alien intervention for only the second or first episode would not have been a particularly good game plan. However, this story acts as a successor to the Cyberwoman episode, which is fantastic, despite not taking place until two episodes later. This is especially odd because the previous episode seemed to work like a pre Cyberwoman episode. There is no tension between the team and Yanto, despite it happening extremely recently, and he just seems to be the charming background character again. Unlike here, where he seems to be written like a more untrustworthy member of the team. Maybe this was because they couldn't have two Chimel episodes back to back, but strange nevertheless. But while the characters are much better defined here, Owen is still a massive dickhead in the opening act of the episode. 
although admittedly it's much better implemented into the episode than in day one. But he's still borderline assaults Gwen. I mean, she did grab him first, but he was winding her up for no good reason. You can see why they did this, though. The tortured characters are extremely well written after this point because you can tell that despite them being capable of being bad people and doing terrible things, it is balanced out with some genuine heart and good intentions. This is what real people are like. If someone does a nice thing for you at one moment, a mood swing is more than likely to change that and they could be making fun of you quicker than you think. This episode is great at showcasing many things alongside its characters, however, most notably for better or for worse in the music. The ending of the story sees Jack drive in to save everyone in a ruddy great tractor, and I say ruddy because that's what the music translates to. It was because of the fact that he's driving through a wall in a tractor, so I thought it would be quite funny. It was late at night, so I thought, I'll, I'll, here he comes in a ruddy great tractor. So it goes, here he comes in a ruddy great tractor, here he comes in a... So that was how that came about, which is um, a little bit silly, but um, it kind of worked. <laughs> The composer showed us that in the making of, and for some people it ruins the track in a very understandable way. However, for me, I still adore it, and I feel it holds weight in its scenes, despite its silly origins. Also, while we're on the subject of great showcasing, this episode does a great job with the direction. I'm not going to sit here and say it's Oscar-worthy or anything, but it manages to give some great angles to create tension, and for once it manages to make scenes in the dark visible, like a lot of Torchwood Series 1. But anyway, back to the main events of the episode, we get a gruesome moment where Owen and Gwen find a body, and I think considering the show's budget and tendency to exaggerate, this manages to work as something genuinely disturbing, and not just more melodrama. This is what people wanted to see when they were told about adult Doctor Who, as it isn't something you'd see in that show, even if there weren't any kids watching, and it manages to hold a shock and still keep the episode's tone moving very well. This is also the moment that holds an immense amount of weight for the story as they realise some, something serious is happening and it's time to stop dicking around and do their jobs. People aim a lot of complaints at Torchwood for basically just being live action Stooby Doo, except with violence and nobbing. And while I can definitely see where they're coming from, I do think that this series does manage to take itself seriously enough when it needs to, or at least when it wants to. And we get a good amount of serious work done by the characters in the rest of this episode. There's also an interesting moment where the villains of the piece, who are still shrouded in mystery, wreck their camping arrangements, which does a good job at showing they have nowhere safe to run to except off into the distance, and leaving this strange being to continue as it is doing and risking countless lives. I think the pace of this episode, up until this point, managed to do slow and scary really well, but as soon as the characters arrive in the village, things start picking up notch by notch which manages to keep the story engaging, and that is not even mentioning the genuinely shocking moment where Gwen is shot. This highlights what I mentioned in the review of Everything Changes after Susie kills herself, that these characters are not invincible and are at risk of either dying or being mortally wounded every episode. This also makes us sympathise with Owen's character at long last where he shows he is a good doctor and that he's in his prime by saving Gwen's life expertly by being witty and charming in order to distract her. I can't blame her for sleeping with him after this. Oh shit, did I leave that bit in? Another element worth noting is the set design, which brilliantly shows up the scary side of normality in a quaint English village. The image of a normal English town filled with rotting corpses is macabre and brutal, and I love it. This is something I adore seeing in horror, where it shows us the terrifying in the everyday. The countryside does not hold back on making it truly haunting. I do not know if it is just the fact there is a dead body though, as there is a lot to say about the pacing. I know I briefly mentioned it earlier and how everything picks up a notch when they arrive in the village, and it's just after a bit, but then the build-up is still eerily quiet and terrifying in the lead-up to Gwen getting shot. A lot of the shots of seeing the characters enter into places appear like handheld cameras, which gives the audience the impression that they are being watched. This episode does have a lot of the trademark torchwood bursting at the places all kinds of blazing, but then the production team had no idea about how this would be mocked by the general public, so had no cause to take these scenes out. Then Tosh and Yantu find the cellar, and everything kicks off. It is so disturbing, and the it, it scenes do such a great job for their characters, and we see a pairing of the team we really actually see, and the way they contrast over what they are thinking about and what their final moments could be also gives us a feeling about how Torchwood has affected both of their lives, for better or for worse. Also, the discovery of Tosh and Yatu finding out they're off food and uncovering bodies in the larder is solved in such a brilliant way that it manages to be terrifying 
while also darkly comedic at the same time. I love how this episode misguides you as you think this is really aliens doing this. Something Chimler's really good at most of the time is tricking you to thinking whatever is happening is actually different. In the woman who fell to earth, the idea that this could be two aliens fighting was a red herring before changing the nature of the villain to reveal the episode is taking a different path. And here he tricks you into thinking aliens are kidnapping humans for flesh, but I think the twist of it being humans eating humans has to go down with me as one of the best moments in the first series of Torchwood. It is genuinely unexpected and further cements Torchwood as existing as a show outside of the shadow of Doctor Who. As while the twist has happened in Doctor Who before, it has never happened to this extent in which the characters are in this form of danger. I don't think it's just the idea itself which makes the episode as good as it is though, as the introduction of different characters in different points of the village slowly gives us the impression that something strange was going on here, and that aliens also benefited by the inclusion of the police. But I don't think any moment does this better than the revelation of the larder in the house as their strength by beating Yanto is shown. What's darker about this revelation though is the way in which it holds up a reflection to the face of humanity, and we have to confront the very possibility that people like this really exist. The scene where Tosh is running from one of them is apparently a homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I do need to watch, but it still holds dramatic weight in the way in which Tosh is in danger. This is because up until this point, Tosh has been portrayed as always knowing what she's doing, so seeing her like this means the characters are in a more deadly situation than ever before. Also, I think this is scarier than almost anything in Doctor Who because of the way it, this really could happen to somebody. So no, it's not a rip-off, it's bloody brilliant. The bit where the guy chokes her and drags her back inside is brutal, and seeing Owen appear to save her shows a great bond between the characters, as well as making Owen a lot more of a sympathetic character. If I had to criticise something, then the idea of the police officer being on the cannibal side was kind of obvious, due to the fact the episode obviously wasn't going to end here. But the episode gets away with it because the characters are in such a dire situation that they will take any chance at hope that they can get. The final set piece in the house is so perfectly put together. You really feel that they're at their absolute lowest points here. And seeing Jack running to see everyone, I often see criticised, but I love it personally. The constant cuts does make it seem a little cheap, but I just feel a sigh of relief when he shows up because I genuinely couldn't see a way out for the characters. You could argue that this is a cheap ending, but then that is the point because the episode has been building towards shutting down all forms of escape for the characters, leaving them with only the only option of cold-blooded murder. And you have to remember that this isn't Doctor Who, and that when you are dealing with characters who break even in this episode, then you can't risk the cheek, wit and humour that the Doctor usually do uses. The last chance scenario is most probably the only chance you would have in this situation, and the episode 100% earns the conclusion in my opinion, because seeing the characters like this makes it the most satisfying ending possible, because these monsters deserve everything they get for the inhumane acts they have undergone. I like how Jack subtly disappears midway through the episode, as it means seeing him again is triumphant and a perfect end to this perfect series of events. The epilogue of this episode just keeps adding more and more great details, and through the characters we can almost hear the words of the writer who has read about these kinds of people and is trying to make sense of this madness and depravity, especially the moment where he tells Gwen about why he does this. Because it made me happy. That was an incredible piece of writing, what a genius script this is, and clearly done by someone so intelligent and capable of handling complex issues. Irrespective of what you may have written before and after, Chimnall's reasoning behind reading about these kinds of people and wanting to know what could lead someone to do something like this is a genuinely brilliant starting point for this episode and acts as a solid backbone for this exploration of the worst of humanity. I love Gwen's line about everything she has seen throughout the first series so far, and the fact that a human's motivation is pathetic and murky as this is the one thing she cannot comprehend, and creates fantastic drama, one of the most memorable lines in the episode. This kind of mental break is what makes Gwen cheat with Owen with such an understandable motivation. I think comparing the determined Gwen who discovered Torchwood in the opening episode to the woman she is now doing the monologue at the end is immensely good writing and character development, even if it is not development for the better on her part. So there we go, that was countryside. Okay, I'm not going to hold back. This was an amazing episode. The episode is genius, exploring the worst of humanity as well as how the characters react to this. The episode has moments of humour but never loses the darkness or the motivations and layers to these complex characters. I love almost every second, even if some of the moments are so disturbing that I need to turn away, even though I genuinely can't. I couldn't recommend this episode more, and I'm pretty sure this may be the best episode of the series. But we'll have to wait and see because I think I hate, not I hate Susie, I think they keep killing Susie, might rival her, but nevertheless, this is the best so far.
Chibnall proved here that he is capable of writing some amazing television, and I noticed here that a theme he seems to keep coming back to in his writing is the best and worst of humanity. And what could make someone do these inhumane things? To be honest, one of the reasons I've been disappointed with his recent Doctor Who episodes is because this is such an interesting theme to make your focus as a writer. But most of the time, he unfortunately just seems to use it as a way for the audience to sympathise with the characters, as he says they are the best of the humanity, without showing us why. But this episode is the exception to that, as there is such an intelligent balance between the best and worst of humankind. And through the dialogues and themes of this episode, you can hear a man who is trying to make sense of the world through writing without breaking the facade of the man behind the curtain. But the episode doesn't just act on its own and act as part of a greater character arc for the rest of the series. As the final scene seems Gwen in bed with Owen as Torchwood has ruined her life, and the pain of wanting to share this but not being able to has broken her down to her worst. Will the storyline improve Gwen as a character or worsen her? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but in all honesty, I am buzzing with excitement to see.